This is Ask the Mayor on KWBE with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. And if you have a question, give us a call. We'll pass that uh, question on to the mayor for him uh, a- answering what uh, might be on your mind about city business uh, this morning. And, uh, you know, think of last week we were getting set for a hot weekend and... All of a sudden, it's 75, 70. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Wow. I mean, you know, <laughs> you and I have seen a lot of August. I don't know if I've seen an August quite like what yeah, the forecast is for the next week and a half, but it sure is very nice. It is looking better, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, about a block west of us, kind of a busy <laughs> place today. Yes. Out here at KWBE, the uh, Tire Amnesty event going on. Kind of a different uh, path on the way in to get there you're right. trying this Right, Westcott Street. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and, you know, I... I I gotta say, I think they're gonna be busy as the number of trucks that I saw rolling into town this morning on the way to, you know, KWBE. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I'm 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 sure, you know, me not really, you know, being. I guess when I go in, I get tires, and they always charge me to re- to, to get rid of the old ones. And, and I'm just amazed that, you know, there's some pretty good-sized truckloads of yeah. tires coming to the amnesty. So at the end of the day, that's I mean, that's great. It's really mm-hmm. helping the environment, and it helps you know, get rid of uh, some tires that can collect water and mm-hmm. mosquitoes and all kinds of things. So yeah. I'm glad we're doing that. While you, we were, well, you were just arriving out here, we saw a pickup go by with about a dozen, 15 tires in the bed of that. So kind of shows you the popularity of the program. And it's for in-county residents, too. It's for three counties. Correct. Anybody so. who's got a three-county plate, um, we had to go to that because we did have I think in the past, a number of vehicles from out of the county with some pretty good sized loads of tires. And, and we really, you know, it, it's great to get rid of all of them, but we sort of want to take care of our own here in Gage County. Got any prediction about when they'll hit the 200 ton limit or take an <laughs> educated guess at it or what? Um, you know, we'll see if we hit it by the end of the day or I would say first thing in the morning. But That uh, was kind of my guess, too, yeah. maybe early Friday. But yeah. Uh, it seems like there was a year or two when it was hit on the first day late I, in the day, but yeah. I could be wrong on that but uh, i'm sure there's a line today yeah yeah i was going to go out there this morning swing by before i got here but it was pretty early and i thought maybe nobody'd be lined up yet so (laughs) i don't know maybe there was so Mm. another event uh coming up next uh, tuesday at the big blue water park 6 to 8 p.m is the uh, beatrice humane society dog swim night i know the council approved that uh, date for that monday night it's almost kind of hard to believe the swimming season is Coming to a close. At the it water is. Park here. What is it? Sunday's the, Sunday's last, the last day. day. Yeah. Um, I don't even know, but it's probably been, what, this is probably about their fifth, sixth time, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a little more. more. Maybe six or seven or somewhere um, in there. So. It's, you know, yeah. if you don't have a, 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 a dog, it's, it's still kind of fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, those dogs <laughs> have a great time in the pool, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good fundraiser for the Humane Society that really does a, a really good job for us here at the city of Beatrice and so um, I think it's kind of a neat way to end the the year yeah I think they break it into what small dogs and larger animals too to sort of keep they, the canine conflicts at bay or whatever things yes, like that so, yes uh, I, yeah. and you know I really haven't seen a lot of conflicts no, for no, yeah. the, the number of years I've witnessed it yeah seen a few questions about and I, you probably get this every year with the water park is why it closes so early I know there are people that would probably like it to stay open to at least a labor day or something but you do face kind of a staffing challenge there a little bit we do uh we lose most of our uh you know qualified lifeguards to back to school Mm -hmm. uh either college or high school and uh you know i think it's just one of those things that from an economic standpoint and and it's and it's a you know look at looking at this year we might have a really cool labor day if mm-hmm. this weather cold through Labor Day, mm-hmm. and then you don't have the traffic count to support yeah. that either. So yeah. um, it does seem early, but when you think about it, everybody gets busy as soon as school starts, uh, and it's just a lack of uh, uh, a workforce, which yeah. is we're not we're not immune to that same issue that a lot of industries are. Another thing, water parks in Nebraska face the wage change just like everybody else does to attract enough people to. Get we, do. Yeah. we do, we um, do. I think we've taken the approach that we're going to try to always keep it at a reasonable cost, even if we have to, you know, subsidize it a little bit because it is an asset for our youth. And I think that's an important outlet for our youth to get some exercise. And I think it's uh, just a a necessity for uh, a community our size. 
Well, even though the pool will be closing, uh, Sunday's the last day. Still have uh, Sir Toma Astro Park. You can hit the splash pad. Hit the splash pad. So that'll, Absolutely. that'll be open a while more, won't it? it it'll be open like a little longer, yes. Yeah, seems like it was September or yeah. as long as the hot weather, at least somewhat yeah. warm weather. So see continues. how the hot weather rolls yeah. around. Another thing uh, from uh, Monday night's council meeting that we might just mention, uh, more success on sponsorship and naming rights for Hannibal Park where you're making improvements there and uh, agreement between uh, c- the city and uh, Coke Nitrogen is yes, the latest one. Yes, that's the latest one, and we thank mm-hmm. Coke for their uh, participation. Uh, you know, I think that sponsorship has been really good. Yeah. I think it'll allow us to continue, uh, you know, like everything else, we have a master uh, plan of what we want to mm-hmm. finish out at Hannibal and... Uh, you know, that's just one more way to take pressure off of taxes. Mm-hmm. Are you getting anywhere close to having to say, hey, that's kind of it, because we got a lot of signs up, and you have an overall sponsor of the park in Correct. Pinnacle Bank. In Pinnacle Bank. And then you also have signs that are in various right. locations across the... I would guess we're coming pretty close to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think we've also been at that long enough that we're probably getting down to the to wire anyway mm-hmm. uh, on you know, people that have helped us really support Hannibal. I think you got to be over four hundred thousand, aren't you? I would guess so. Yeah. I don't have the I exact the figure, <laughs> but I'm pretty. I, I would yeah. guess you're pretty close. And part of that, uh, you have the big parking lot project Correct. that is coming up, and uh, I'm assuming what uh, wasn't there another ball field in there? I think I, there was. Yes, uh, kind of where the yeah. parking was or it has yeah. been. Has anyway. been yeah. correct. So okay. Uh, another thing, maybe just to quickly mention, and I know you've been handling probably about anywhere from four to six of these every council we meeting, uh, airport leases of space. I know it's kind of more of a it's more of a procedure thing to formalize leases, as I understand. But it is a big uh, it is a big revenue source, isn't it? It's it's a revenue source mm-hmm. that helps uh, make improvements at the airport. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it is something a little bit probably different, uh, as everybody knows. You know, the city has adopted or taken over the, the airport, and we have an airport advisory committee that's done a wonderful job helping the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things, though, that we decided to do was formalize, just like most any places, when you have, uh, whether it's a hangar or a storage unit or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, there wasn't necessarily a formal process with a lease, and uh, so we implemented that and have worked actually with a lot of the, the people that have hangers out there to make sure how it's worded and those type of things. So mm-hmm. you'll probably see that continue to happen for a while. Uh, but again, I think it's always good to have a formal process. I think one of them was the avionics uh, shop this week, if I remember right, out there was one of the leases. But, one of the leases is the avionics shop. Mm-hmm. And I will just kind of tell you up front that we are very fortunate to have a very talented person in an avionics shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does a wonderful job. And, you know, you don't necessarily drive by and think about businesses that are in there but uh, he is in there and we are very thankful to have him here in in the beatrice municipal airport eventually you have some pretty good sized work coming up too because there's going to be a kind of redoing of the apron and the, how you get to the runways and plus the fuel line plus the project fuel. and that is what grant funded and, that is yeah. grant funded i think it's 90 10 mm-hmm. i think uh the grant pays for 90 percent of it and we pay for 10 percent. i see any news on that as far as the timetable of that or is you're looking this spring i believe yeah. yeah before construction before construction starts okay all right yeah, we're running out of that window of of when to start projects with <laughs> yeah. with nebraska uh, you don't think it's going to be cold but it will yeah We'll take a break here. 8.40 is our time on Ask the Mayor. We'll be back with more in a moment. You're listening to Ask the Mayor on KWBE with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. Uh, One thing also from Monday night's meeting, and uh, it's probably not one of the, I guess, more noticed things, but happens uh, pretty frequently. You approve uh, contracts under an owner-occupied home rehabilitation project that you're doing with the Southeast Nebraska uh, development district and it doesn't get a lot of attention but uh, it provides for some nice uh, improvements some assistance to homeowners who qualify it really does and i'm trying to think gosh i bet we've had at least a dozen of those yeah, i was going to say more. i know you had a half dozen monday night alone right, so right. yeah and, and those are are grant funded mm-hmm. uh the total amount of the grant that a, a owner occupied home can get is twenty five thousand dollars there's a 
limit on, uh, I guess, the value of the home and, and income, some restrictions there. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, as, as I've driven through, you've seen some homes that I don't think otherwise would be upgraded to that 25000 mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a different grant. I mean, SEND administers it. And at the end of the day, because they don't want anybody for discrimination or whatnot, we don't really get to know where the property is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't get to know who the property owners are. And so I don't know if it's like a blind bid or not, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a blessing that I think it's really helped some people put some more value into their home and, mm-hmm. and, and take care of maybe in some cases some really necessary repairs. And it maybe allows them to stay in their home longer, or maybe if it's good enough and its value goes up, then they want to move up, they can sell it for more to Absolutely. somebody else. Absolutely. So. It's, a, it's a great program, and, and we're thankful that we're able to continue to do that. And one of the big issues in Nebraska is housing. I know you guys are facing that just as much as uh, any other community, I imagine. Yes, the uh, approval of the master plans took place Monday night for the Lincoln and Paddock Lane school sites. They're not totally set in stone, but kind of the concepts are there uh, to deal with. And here again, we're talking about uh, housing. Yeah, what, what a great tie-in, right? Yeah, really. That's why I put them back <laughs> to back. That's why you put them back to back. I, I yeah. saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Amazing how we sneak things in there like that. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, we know that we're going to acquire the um, school properties probably October, November-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, just like anything else, uh, it's always nice to have a, a master plan to follow so you know kind of what you're doing. It, it, I, it's kind of like step one or two of the process so you're just not blindly going down to, okay, we, we tore down the two school sites, now what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. And so... You know, tie it into the fact that we really don't have a lot of open houses. This will give us, between the two sites, approximately 40 building sites. Mm -hmm. And as you, one of the things I was thinking about and reflecting on is is, uh, a couple of years ago, one of the the, um, challenges or one of the things that was part of, you know, why do you want to run for mayor? Why do you want to run for city council? They talked about trying to grow Beatrice Mm -hmm. and uh, you know first of all I'll say first that 12,500 is not a bad number to be at and we've been there for a long time and and there's nothing wrong with that but as you look at trying to continue to grow one of the things that has stopped us from growing is the fact that we don't have housing and so in order to grow we need housing lots and we need some housing to be built Uh, I know that uh, there's a number of you know industries that always look to come to communities of about our size Mm -hmm. and one of the first things they look at is a labor force and the second thing they look at is do they how do they have housing for people to move in if we don't have the labor force right here Mm -hmm. and so those two sites are going to give us some really good building sites in that what i want to say moderate to you know, when I say moderate, it's hard to say what yeah. moderate is anymore. Yeah, it's kind of changed um, over the Because it's different than what I'm saying. But, <laughs> you know, that, that moderate housing, it's not, it's not low-income housing. It's, it's by, by far, it's going to be market rate lots. Um, and, you know, I think the average home is going to be two hundred seventy-five to $300,000. Yeah. Somewhere in there is kind of what they targeted the lot size mm-hmm. and, and the 1,500 square feet home for. Well, I think you had kind of a mix of duplexes, townhomes, single-family homes. So you got a variety there. It's not just all of one classification. That Correct. You might see sitting there for a while more. There are options in it. So. Right. And I think they took a, a really good approach because uh, they built it in. There's a couple of cul-de-sacs. They kind of built in safety, road safety as well. So, for instance, if you look at uh, Lincoln mm-hmm. School, that's on 19th Street and uh, Lincoln, and so those are actually going to be the backyards so we don't dump a lot of traffic on what we have for our two main thoroughfares there. Mm-hmm. And so that will give us some safety. Um, it's kind of a neighborhood concept that, that I think is really, mm-hmm. really well thought out. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited to see how that will come to fruition now, probably not tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. but uh, over the next 10 years. And placement of sidewalks and walking access into yes. the sites was kind of changed a little bit or added in. I know that was one of the concerns expressed by some people about, you know, how to, do you provide enough uh, right. pedestrian access? Yeah, you'll see some sidewalks that connect to the rest of the other the, the, the existing neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't driven by this morning, but on the Lincoln site, um, 
I know the stop signs are up, the four-way stop. Is the uh, stoplight still flashing, or is it off now? Or it, Well, <laughs> after, after our discussion Monday night, I would hope that it's off, yeah. but uh, I have not driven by there. I think uh, they were going to probably cover it to begin with. Correct. Get people correct. used to Seem like in the times I have driven by there, people are kind of getting acclimated to the four-way stop. They are, and I think so. typically you cover it for a little while and then, you know, remove it. Yeah. Uh, so, Yeah. We'll see how it all works out. Everything's an experiment at one time or another. It is. It takes it a little is. while to get used to it. And that has been, um, you know, there's been a number of comments positive mm -hmm. because they don't want to sit, sit at the stoplight. Mm -hmm. And there's been some that are negative because they're used to it. And so it will take some time to get used to. Traffic study really shows that uh, the four-way stop is safer than the yeah. stoplight. And we'll get a real test next week uh, as school gets started. <laughs> yes, we and will. And how the traffic patterns change, so it'll take a while to get adjusted. But uh, yep. we'll see how it goes. We'll so, see how it goes. Yeah. Back uh, to wrap up Ask the Mayor in just a moment. Back on Ask the Mayor to wrap up our program for today. Uh, Monday night, uh, the uh, council approved the design uh, uh, choice for a design firm for Lincoln Street between 25th and 27th. That's kind of west of the uh, work that's going on right now. Uh, pretty much, uh, you know, I was out there looking at it the other day. It's kind of an asphalt road that's showing some wear and tear over the years. It does get a lot of traffic on the way to BSDC, so... Uh, I guess it's time to do something with it. It is. I think it's the last section, too, that doesn't have a curb and gutter, yeah. if I remember correctly. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you're putting in the street that goes from 27th out to the school, uh, we have the opportunity to go ahead and finish off those two blocks and put mm -hmm. curb, curb and gutter in and, and make it, you know, I think a, a good throwwell through way to get to the school. I think it does include what sidewalk, too, that would connect yeah. with the trail and whatever up to that or near that point. I Correct, guess, so. it does. So, so I think it'll be a good project. I think, uh, you know, there was some discussion of how we were going to, what we we're going to do to spend the money, and I think that was a wise choice. Yeah. Some of the, uh, going out there the other day on the part that they are working on from the Christchurch community parking lot to the east, seems like they're making quite a bit of progress there. There's some paving in there already. <laughs> There's some paving in there. As you noted, it's yeah. deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thick piece of concrete there. It looks like it could handle bus traffic pretty easily. I think. That's right. So I didn't look at the uh, 33rd and Lincoln thing as, as to how far along that is, if that's... Uh, I, I, I haven't I haven't been out there, you know, in the last couple of weeks. So I might I'm have to sure. take a drive. Or yeah, me so, too. Sometimes I do that, just get bored and, <laughs> hey, take a look at how things are going out there. So the uh, timetable on the 25th to 27th thing, uh, any kind of idea about D that? We'll go through the design phase now because uh, we went ahead and approved that. Uh, I think... That might take us up until, I think, bid we talked about maybe January yeah. so we can get it in in the spring construction period of time. Yeah. Have a, it's a little touchier one because you have some re residential access Correct. to the north that you have to probably, what, do that in stages or so? Or kind we of will. I'll do it in stages. It'll be um, a lot like 13th Street was out mm -hmm. by... Um, the country club there mm -hmm. because we want to make sure we how we do it and there'll be driveways and entry points that we have to work around okay uh one of those things that pops up now and then a uh, water line leak on uh, herbert street uh, that caused kind of a collapse of part of a lane of the pavement out there and that's been closed down yes uh, i hadn't been out to look at it but saw the photo of it that uh, someone from the city took and it's uh, there's a little bit of damage there. There's a little bit of damage. Water leak, I think, came from an abandoned home. Uh, it's one of those things that you don't really get a good read on until mm -hmm. uh, too late. If the leak was probably on not at the meter side. So mm -hmm. um, bottom line is we're going to fix a nice little indentation in the road. Yeah. You know, you're going to chase Rob Moreau out of his uh, job here pretty soon. <laughs> well, <laughs> ever since he's come on board, <laughs> like all of a sudden we've had, uh, of course, they just happen. Whenever they, they happen, you don't get to choose. It just kind of happens that way. Baptism so. by fire. You bet, yeah. <laughs> get to address a lot of uh, difficulties with his crews. Uh, the other thing is a planned, uh, I guess, replacement that's going yep. on, and that's the one on Ella Street where I see they cut into the pavement uh, next to the municipal auditorium. Yes. And uh, that one will take, what, uh, yeah. to get done or yeah. any you know, idea? I, off the top of my head, a, yeah. a best guess, two or three weeks, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's a pretty significant project, though. It is. Is, is that it a is. sizable main there? That uh, It probably is, I, you know, based in yeah. age. Yeah. Uh, it's not as bad as going down Court Street, but, you yeah. know, it'll be one that we need to take care of. Yeah. That one was kind of in the area of where, you know, the year before you did the, well, 4th Street was one of the first Correct. places to do. At that time, was it in pretty good shape then or just wasn't? Or did they notice that, hey, this is one that connects to the system, maybe this is next? Or? I, I think it was probably planned out that this would be next. That would mm-hmm. be my best guess. I see. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have to talk about? We could talk about uh, cardboard, or do you want to talk well, about Well, we uh, should probably yeah, talk about cardboard. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we've tried very, very hard um, and upgraded a little bit the trailers for recycling. And uh, I think this is the second time that we have had someone put in, well, pig's heads um, and sacks that have the pig innards. And basically it's ruined not only the cardboard, but it also is uh, a a process to clean up when we dump the cardboard out to the recycling center and all those spill out onto the floor. Mm -hmm. Um, This one I think had been in there for a day or two and it just wasn't a good situation for the cardboard, which has to go out to the, the landfill, and it's not a good situation for our employees to have to clean up what I would probably say is vandalism yeah. or very close to that because, you know, we can't continue to have that happen. We're not sure what the solution is, but we're going to try to find a solution. But, you know, at the end of the day, if we can't figure out how to control these things, it's it, it, it's one of those things we have to consider. Do we continue to have that recycling center down there or don't we? And, you know, I think everybody likes the recycling that uses it, and we'd hate to see it go away. But at the end of the day, we've got to make sure we can run it properly. Yeah. The initial dumping problem, didn't that involve, like, metal or something else, which kind of messed up machinery? Had that problem, too. It, so. Yeah, I mean, it's a great, it, it would be great, but the bottom line is it's one of those situations where a few may ruin the situation for many. Yeah. And that's, that's what's sad, yeah. because at the end of the day, I think it's been used very well, but now that we have these issues, it may come to the point where we have to figure out a different solution for recycling. Yeah. Camera monitoring, is that a potential? I mean, you're right next to a city auditorium building. But yeah, it might be. Um, again, it's one of those things we'll look at. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it, it's very disappointing that a program like that could go by the wayside due to um, vandalism. Mm-hmm. Not having it for however length of time, what are the options for people with cardboard now? Uh, just... There's not a lot of options. Well, yeah. there is. I mean, there is an option that, that is out there, and it's done a good job. We do have a recycling program mm-hmm. uh, that the, you know, we have somebody who comes up, and, and they, they go through the streets, and they pick up, uh, It's a, it, you charge, but mm-hmm. uh, through Mars, you can contract to have a recycling program. And the recycling mm-hmm. program that we have is really very good. Mm-hmm. It's a good program, and it's one of those things that, you know, is, is that the way we're going to have to go down the road? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it's there. But who's ever doing the dumping is hurting the people that want to drop it off for free or, or at least at their own yep. time. Their it own is. Expense, so. Unfortunately, yes. that's true. That's too bad. Uh, progress uh, on a brighter note, kind of do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to end on a higher note here. <laughs> than not, not everything's doom and gloom, although you look at social media and you might get that impression every once in a while, but uh, the uh, Jimmy John's uh, restaurant location at 6th and Monroe, they have really been going uh, great guns on the structure. There. They have. I mean, it looks really great. It's always good to see uh, another, you know, project that's going well, and we thank Sam Nixon for uh, choosing Beatrice for a Jimmy John's and also two spaces that can be leased. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm hoping that they're ahead of schedule and, uh, you know, we might see Jimmy John's by the end of the year, if not mm-hmm. the very first of next year. Yeah, I think their original estimate, they were looking at first quarter of 2025, yes. I think, or maybe first, maybe slightly into second right. quarter. But, yeah, you look at, uh, I know they had a couple of weather situations, one where we had that big... <laughs> windstorm which caused a, a bit of a problem there but it seems like ever since then uh, things have been going pretty well at the site yeah the hardest part i think about construction is once that building gets up 
people think, oh, gee, we're almost done. Yeah. And then a lot of work probably has yeah. to be done Still inside. Still have to do, yeah, interior yeah. things. So. Plus there's the, um, you know, all the outside work in terms of sidewalks, curbs. Correct. Things like that. That work is going on now. Any idea on how that's uh, that's been going so far? Or? You know, when I drive by there, I think mm-hmm. most of the sidewalks are in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're finishing up the roads in that area. I think it's just moving along very well. Seems like traffic is getting through there fine. There's no yep. real problem. It's just no. have to slow down and take a lane away or something like right. that. But that's yeah. kind of a temporary thing. That's a temporary so, yeah. it's a situation. Be a nice uh, thing to see because that uh, lot had been kind of empty for quite a while. So it is. Be, it's it's, it's going to be a great, great improvement and uh, add to our, our, our wonderful selection of, of fast food as you go down yeah. that road. Yeah. Well, it's almost time for me to go out and see the tire site and see okay. how many are out there, see All how right. big the pile is. But that does it for our program today. Thanks, Bob, right. for coming Thank in. Thank you. Again.